If you're looking for a boat that can let you fish freshwater lakes for largemouth bass, hit the saltwater rivers for trout, snook, and reds, plus head offshore so you can set your sights on snapper or sailfish, then a bay boat in the 20-foot to 22-foot range may be the best boat for you. Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, we're featuring the Swiss Army Knife of boats, 20 to 22-foot bay boats that can be used for catching most species of fish that swim in coastal or inland waters. Some key features to look for in this class are a hydraulic jack plate to give you shallow water access, rear seating for your passengers makes long runs smooth and safer, a large bow casting deck big enough for two anglers, multi-use storage both below deck and under the casting decks. The center console needs to have enough space for today's built-in electronics. For live baiting, a high capacity live well is a must helm seating that is comfortable and allows you to stand while running shallow water. Easy access to all of your systems is very important. A hole shape that knocks down a chop and doesn't draw a lot of water. Bay boats are the fastest growing segment of the fishing boat industry and may be the best fit for your fishing and your lifestyle. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as we feature three versatile bay boats that allow you to target a wide variety of fish and take the family to the sandbar. Blue Wave 2000 Pure Bay, Sea Chaser 210LX, and the Velocity 220 Bay. They'll be conducting walkthroughs, test drives, and reviewing key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Hi, I'm Dave East, boating editor of Florida Sportsman Magazine. And I'm Captain Rick Riles, program director of the Florida Sportsman Radio Network. Today we're in Stewart, Florida at Pirates Cove Marina, and we're going to look at some bay boats, 20 to 22 feet. These boats are the most popular part of the boat industry right now. I tell you, Dave, I've always dreamed of having two boats. I'd love to have a 60-foot sport fishing boat with a true flats boat up on the bow that I could get real skinny. But where the industry's going is marrying those two boats because there's a lot of guys that need a boat that they can do more things in. Well, it's funny you say that because that's exactly what's fueling this. You've got the guys that have had the big boats, they fished offshore, they still want to fish, but they don't want the expense, they don't want to get beat up offshore, they want to come back inside, but there may be a day they do want to go outside. A bay boat will let you do that. Then you've got the guys in the flats boats. They fish the flats. They want to go across larger parts of water. Maybe it's a little bit rougher, and they're looking out that inlet going, man, I would really like to go. So they're trading in their, their flats boats and going to the bay boats. So we take both ends of the spectrum. That's what's fueling the bay boat industry right well, now. Well, Dave, take me for example. I love my little two-hour trips. Go catch a couple of redfish and a trout, all right? But you let springtime come and the ocean get calm, man, I get blue water fever bad. I need a boat I can still go chase sailfish and dolphin in. And that's exactly what these bay boats are all about. They're very, very versatile. The three boats we're going to look at in particular, a 20-foot blue wave, we're going to look at a 21-foot sea chaser, and a 22-foot velocity. Hey, who's not going to love a boat that you can catch a bram on Monday and a blue marlin on Tuesday? Let's go check them out. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. I love spending time with my kids outdoors, especially when they're doing something they love. Although I do not actively fish, I like to play my part. By purchasing a fishing license, it supports youth programs, wildlife enforcement, access to fishing, and many more things that allow us to have a safe, fun time outdoors. These are the reasons I do have my Florida fishing license. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This week we'll be featuring 20 to 22 foot bay boats. Dave and Rick started off with the Blue Wave 2000 Pure Bay. Hi Rick, something that you really know a lot about, Dynamite comes in small packages. And this is the smallest boat on these three that we brought, but I tell you what, it has got some big water legs. It really does. This boat's got excellent features for, uh, for being able to fish both offshore and inshore. Well, what you don't see on this boat, we're standing on a four-grid stringer system oh, oh, that's oh, bonded oh. 360 degrees all the way around. Hold on, Mr. Boat Builder Man, okay? Fishermen don't know what a bonded stringer system is. Basically, your stringers, they're your lateral strength to right. your hull that run fore and aft. Right. And they're bonded to the hull while it's still in the mold. This makes the boat very, very strong, very, very stiff, adds rigidity to the hull, and, and plus, you know how when you go on some boats and you get out it, hollow 55 sure. gallon drum oh, noise. Oh, absolutely. Not in this boat. Very, very quiet. Even when you're hitting the big waves, nice solid feel. This is one of the bay boats that hasn't forgot the family. Not only does it have the same stern seating we've seen, but... The most comfortable place to sit on the boat. Right. But, oh, oh, armrest. Oh. Now this, that's pretty cool. 
is really a comfortable yep. place to go. My wife would dig that, I promise you. Well, from back here, the seat seems a little tall, but what I love about it, this Yeti cooler, I can open it, I don't have to pull it out, I get to my drinks. It's the most frustrating thing in rocket launchers ever, is when the, when the height of the cooler makes it to where you can't raise the lid and reach in and get a drink. Well, let me tell you what I like about this rocket launcher, okay? Us short guys have a hard time seeing things. I love to get up a little bit higher. Dave, you would be amazed. Every inch you raise off the deck greatly increases how far you can see. Right, and for comfort, look, hold down foot rest, your feet aren't dangling, now you can see. Hey Dave, let me tell you something else too. When I do stand up when I'm driving, you'd be amazed at how much more comfortable this incline makes you. Sometimes it's just little things like that that a boat builder adds, makes your no, day no, no. much more comfortable. A fisherman tells a boat builder he needs. That's where that came from. Exactly. Another feature I really like about this 20-foot blue wave, it's got a self bailing cockpit. I mean, I know you see that on a lot of bay boats, but in the center, there's a sump drain that takes out that last little bit of water that seems to never go out on its own. Not only does it never go out on its own, it, you leave your boat on a trailer, it will always have a little bit of water sitting in it if it rains, and, and doggone it, that grows algae and makes it hard to keep your deck clean. Hey Dave, I really like the idea of no splash well. It gives you more room back here and enables you to raise your motor higher. Well, in a 20-foot boat, you have to maximize every inch of space. That's a great way to do it. Every inch is a compromise. They did a great job with this. They've got it to where your motor can come up and you don't step in that splash well as you walk across the transom. Let me tell you a feature I really like on the Blue Wave that you ought to see on all boats. The ability to take down this rail. That means you can fit it in your garage, okay? A flat boat, you can slide right in, but so often this rail keeps you from putting your bay boat in your garage. Yeah, well, the detachable windshield we've seen a lot, and it's on one of the other boats that's here. But the ability for this handrail to also fold flat, man, that's great. You're saving the wind resistance, and like you said, low bridges, maybe you've got a little bridge that you have to get under in a canal. This is a nice feature to have. Hey, boat builder guy, you ever washed a boat? Let me tell you how much easier it is to wash a non-skid boat with this pattern in it instead of the sandpaper type finish. Well, it's not going to tear up your mops or your chamois. And even a good heavy-duty brush will get down in there and make it clean. But what I like about it is it's safe. I mean, this anti-skid is really aggressive, and you're not going to slip. Yeah, let me tell you something. I took that sandpaper finish deck one time to Mississippi. I never got the red clay out of that thing. This boat you can always keep clean. Well, even their decks and their hatches all have the nice same matching anti-skid. Not only does it look good, too, it knocks the glare off. Let me tell you something I like, speaking of hatches, okay? This long hatch right here is a long fish box. I love long skinny fish. If I catch one, I need room to slide him in. Doesn't do me any good to give me a big square box. If I've got a long skinny one, I can slide in enough kingfish or wahoo to take home for dinner. Well, what we've seen so far in these bay boats, they can take rough water. I wouldn't hesitate to take this boat clear of the inlet and go out and chase a mahi or a kingfish. Oh, heavens no. That's the whole reason behind the bay boat. Here we go with the versatility argument again. We've got a jack plate. We can raise our engine, we can fit it into a pocket, but when we need to get to big water, we can do it. Not only is that fish box insulated, Dave, you've actually got two more. You've got one down here that's fully insulated, and one up here, you can carry home a pile of fish. All right, now right behind you, you've got the same size lid here, but now this is a locking rod box. You can put six outfits in here, and the way that the shelf is built in there, it holds the rods up off the floor. Yeah, it does, Dave, and I really like the fact that they put shelves there instead of holes. Makes it a whole lot easier to put your rod away while you're running. To round out the front deck on this Blue Wave 20, you've got the step that you and I both love. Makes it easy to get on and off. But you have a nice big landing pad here for your trolling motor. So many bay boats right now, they forget about this. And the bow comes to a point, there's no place to put a trolling motor. You're not going to have a bay boat without a trolling motor. It defeats the whole purpose. Rick. If you, can't, if you can get shallow, it doesn't do you any good unless you can power yourself across the flats with a trolling motor. Right, you need a place to land the trolling motor, having a plug here, it's convenient, it's in the right spot. Stay tuned for this week's Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all-new F200 inline four-stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel-efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all-new F200. 
legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Welcome back. Here's Dave and Rick with this week's Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar. Dave, there are some key components that made bay boats so versatile. One of them is a jack plate. It's the way to get shallow. What I like about a jack plate is as you move the controls, the engine goes up vertically. I mean, you can have your trim, and the trim can also move the motor, but it's moving it up and down on an angle. Well, you, your problem is with that, Dave, if your motor's down but it's trimmed all the way up, it forces your bow higher and your motor lower. Right, you're so, actually going to draw more right, water. To, to draw less water, you actually have to raise the motor to where the foot of the motor is up into the pocket of the velocity. Right, well there's another benefit too to a jack plate. When you're running fast, if you really want to squeak out that last little bit of performance, if you can raise that motor as high as you can and not starve it for water, and you can keep the thrust from the prop parallel with the surface of the water, your boat's going to be way faster, less drag on that lower unit. The less amount of planing surface you put in the water, the faster your boat goes. Right, so really the jack plate, you're going to get benefits in two areas. One, it's going to let you run shallower. Two, it's going to let you run faster. All right, Rick, we're aboard the Velocity 220 Bay. They're built out of Sanford, Florida. This is the largest boat in this class of the bay boats that we're looking at. This boat may be the perfect size bay boat if you've got a family and you want to take them fishing. Right, well four guys can easily fish off of this boat. Or let's say in the summertime I want to go chase dolphin. I'm going to want that little bit of extra ponies in the back and I'm going to want that little bit of extra length to be able to span the waves to reach further offshore. Dave, I never met a fish I didn't like. Right. Okay, I want to catch the littlest one inshore, I want to catch the biggest one offshore. You know, I, I've always dreamed of having a mega yacht with a, a flat skiff on the bow. It's not practical for 99% of the population, but the class of bay boats that we're talking about today really incorporates everything that you want to do. It's not perfect at anything, but it's great at a whole lot of things. Nice big boat. You've got a 200 horse Mercury on the back, plenty of horsepower. This boat is very, very fast for its size. Dave, you know, and, and that's an important point. Guys always think, and a good friend of mine made this mistake. He bought a boat and he said, I'm going to get a smaller engine so I burn less fuel. That's not the case. What's important is matching your engine to your hull so your engine's not working so hard that it burns more fuel. Exactly. This motor at three quarters throttle, as opposed to a smaller motor at full throttle, she's actually going to be more fuel efficient. You know when most motors are, are most efficient? It's 75% of the throttle, 75% of the time. Exactly. Rick, what I love about bay boats, they all have front casting decks. This Velocity 220 Bay has a nice large casting deck, but they make good use of it. There's a lot of hatches up here. Well, there is, Dave, and let me tell you what's important for us older guys. They got a step right here to step up on the casting platform with. You get up and down off that platform enough times in a day, it takes a toll on your knees. Well, not only that, that's a safety feature. When I mean, you don't have to take that big step down, not only is it comfortable, it's going to be safer. Well, it is, and let me tell you something I love about the casting platform on this boat. I still love being offshore, and that means I might run into a real big fish every now and then. This boat's got the fish box to hold it. Yeah, this is a very large fish box for a boat this size. Well, it is, and it's insulated and it holds ice well, but you run into a 50-pound cobia, you can slide him in there. You don't have to have him shoved in a fish bag somewhere. Right. Not only that, if I take this boat to the Keys and we're going to go diving, all my dive gear can fit in here. Or let's say I take the kids to the sandbar, boogie boards, picnic baskets, it'll all fit. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's the, that's the reason for these boats. Versatility is the very reason why bay boats were invented. Just after this great big fish box is a bow live well. There's another one just like it in the stern. Yeah, and there's a few important things about live wells, Dave. First off, rounded corners. they right. got to have them. Second off, you'd be surprised, but for a really good boat, it's got to have at least two wells. Now let me explain to you why. First off, you may use more than one kind of live bait. You may want blue runners and greenies on the same day. You don't want them together, okay? The blue runners will beat the greenies up. You may catch a fish that you're gonna release after a weigh-in. And let me give you one more point. When you're gonna have two live wells, make sure one of them's in the stern. Because if you fish on a really choppy day, you'd be surprised on how much better your bait does in the rear well than it does the front well. Most days makes no difference. Really rough day, you always want your bait in the stern live well. Well, another thing on a really rough day, get the weight off the bow. So I would move my bait to the back, I would drain this, I wouldn't carry around that extra seawater in the bow. Almost eight pounds a gallon, think about it. If that's a 30 gallon well, that's an extra 240 pounds or another person you took with you that day. Exactly. Hi right, Rick, you know how we're always talking about how the features in a boat are important? This velocity, the windshield's adjustable. So on a day like today, we're running, we're getting the wind in our face, but right. let's say we happen to hit a rainstorm, 
This windshield will go up. We can tuck in behind it. We're not going to get pelted with raindrops. Ah, uh, the evolution of the center console. You're right, Dave. Windshields have always been too tall for me or not tall enough, okay? This one, adjust it where you want it. You can lower it down. You can raise it up high to block the rain from you. It's an excellent idea. You know, Dave, the first time I ever saw a rocket launcher on a fishing boat, I thought that was the end of the world. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. The truth is, if you're making a long run and get off choppy water, sitting down with the backrest is actually a lot more comfortable. Absolutely. In a 22-foot boat, I can see this boat making some pretty long runs. And being able to sit down can be much more comfortable. The ergonomics of it, it's almost like driving a car. You know, it makes, it makes your helm chairs a lot more versatile, and that's what bay boats are all about, is being more versatile. The rear casting deck on the Velocity, you've got flip-up seats on the other side, another live well, loads of storage, but what I really like is the access into all the systems. Suppose you're taking on water, okay? You can look down in here and see exactly what it is that's malfunctioning. Is it your wall water pump? Is it a live well that's, that's sucking water shouldn't be? You can tell that because everything's labeled like you would see on a much bigger sport fish boat. Well, even just simple maintenance, if I can get out those pumps and I can get out those through haul fittings, I'm probably going to take better care of them. That's exactly right. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Florida Sportsman, the source for fishing in the outdoors since 1969. Florida's largest fishing and outdoors magazine. Year-round TV with real-time Florida Sportsman and Florida Sportsman Best Boat, Florida's number one online resource. Over 8 million page views a month. Live reports from the water every Saturday morning. Hands-on instruction, seminars and demonstrations, books, charts and more. Become part of the Florida Sportsman community today. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew stayed at Pirates Cove Resort and Marina in Stewart, Florida. Family owned and operated, featuring 50 renovated rooms with an outstanding restaurant and a full service 50 slip marina. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This week, we're featuring 20 to 22 foot bay boats. All right, Rick, now we're in a 21 foot bay boat. We've brought two other ones, one larger than this and one smaller than this. Let's talk about the reason somebody would choose a middle of the road boat instead of going smaller or larger. Well, I'll tell you what I noticed the second we stepped on this Sea Chaser by Carolina Skiff. This is not your daddy's Carolina Skiff. Oh no, 21 feet, fully molded inner liner, molded hatches. This is normally not what you see out of a Carolina Skiff. No, it's not, Dave. And remember, everything's a compromise. Sometimes a bigger boat's better, sometimes a smaller boat's better. This may be just the right size for what you need in a bay boat. What I like is powered with a 150 Mercury, plenty of power. This boat's got all the performance you would need in something this size. And let's be logical about it. The less planing surface you put in the water, the less fuel you're going to burn. Hence, you can use a small, little bit smaller motor than what we've seen on some of the other bay boats. Right, and two, if somebody's got a smaller truck, maybe they don't have a big F-150. Maybe they've got a little Jeep Cherokee. It'll pull this boat. Well, it will. Let me tell you something. This boat is set up well for taking more than two people. This isn't just a hardcore fishing boat. You can keep your family happy on here. All right, Rick, most any bay boat's gonna have a trolling motor. What I love about this Sea Chaser, I've got a nice flat area here to mount my trolling motor. And this is normally something you only see on bass boats, but my panel, I've got a plug for my trolling motor. I've got a 12 volt accessory plug. I can even raise the motor up and down with my trim. Uh, and that mount. comes standard on this boat? Standard That's the way it comes? Boat. That's a sweet setup. Hey, Dave, everybody puts rod lockers on their bay boats. Finally, one that opens right. Absolutely, with it opening like this, this boat on the trailer, now you can reach, reach in and get your rods. Exactly. Plus, it's held in place by a stainless steel shock. Isn't that something that you never thought you'd see boats like this built with stainless steel shocks in them? How cool is that? Rick, ever go down the highway and put your hand out the window of a moving car? Well, imagine your hand the size of this windshield. Yeah? One thing I like about the Sea Chaser, these quick disconnects, you can pull the windshield off, and now you don't have all that windage being pushed down the highway. Less wind resistance. Exactly. I tell you something else too, Dave. You know what I've started having to do with my bay boat is I wrap this in saran wrap when I'm traveling down the highway just because of the bugs. Right. Well, not necessary on this boat. Just take the windshield off. Bugs aren't an issue. I like it. Dave, I'll tell you one thing. This bay boat has a really cool console. I'm not used to seeing, look at the labels. Everything's labeled, every switch. It's beautiful to look at. That is a good looking console. As a former boat builder, I'm always looking at ergonomics on a boat. Things like a toe kick under a console, that way you don't stump your toe, it makes it more comfortable for driving. But also on the seat, let's say we're gonna anchor, we're in the keys, we're gonna be yellow tailing. 
being able to push the seat back like that, now I can face backwards. You That's know what? That's a comfortable thing to have. I'm proud of you. You're almost becoming a fisherman. That's exactly what a fisherman needs. He needs to be able to run with his back against it, and when he puts his lines in the water, he needs to be able to turn around and watch it. You're making real progress, my boy. <laughs> well, let's say you're going to use this boat for the family. You're pulling a tube, you're skiing. You can be watching the person on the tube. There's still enough room for me to get back here and drive. Hey, Dave, you ever go on a cruise? Never, not yet. You know where the most comfortable cabin is? In the stern. In the stern. You know where the comfortable place on a big sport fish is? In the stern. In the stern. You know where the most comfortable place on this sea chaser is? Those two seats. You're doggone right it is. This is a good idea. You got a casting platform, but if your wife's coming with you, okay, and your mother-in-law, stick them both back here. Hey Dave, you know how I can tell a fisherman like me designed this live well instead of a boat builder like you? How's that? See the clear lid? Right. Okay, any problems I have with my, with my live well? If my drain gets clogged up, if my pump quits, whatever, all I gotta do is turn around, check it every now and then, make sure my water level's right. Nice circular live well too. There's no corners for your bait like you were saying earlier. You're learning, my boy, you're learning. Not only that, Dave, the live well is lit. At night I can tell how many baits I have left and how they're doing. In fact, not only that, but every compartment on this boat is lit, even the battery box. No matter which size bay boat you decide on, they all have one thing in common, versatility catching mutable species of fish, pulling your kids on a water toy, or being used as the family oasis on the weekends. A bay boat in the 20 to 22 foot range may be the best boat for you. All right, that wraps up this episode of Best Boat. We looked at some bay boats in the 20 to 22 foot class, and really what I noticed, all of them are very, very similar in function, but have a specific purpose. Dave, they really did. And let me tell you something, two feet doesn't sound like a lot of difference, but in a 20 to 22 foot boat, it's a world of difference. Every inch of a boat's a compromise. You may want to go with the more horsepower of the 22. You have more wind resistance the higher the sides of your boat. There's all kinds of factors to take into consideration. If it's just you and a buddy, you want to turn them and fish, a 20-foot bay boat may be just what you need. Yeah, maybe the 21 or maybe the 22. A lot of factors. Look at the tow vehicle you're going to be pulling with, the money you want to spend to purchase the boat, and then the money you're going to spend to keep that boat on the water for fuel and maintenance and stuff like that. But I'm sure you can find one that'll fit your lifestyle. Either way, it's the most versatile boat that you're going to get. You can fish inshore, you can fish offshore. It's really a good all-around boat. You're right, Dave. Versatility is the key to this class of boats. They're the fastest growing boat in the industry. There's a reason why. Let me tell you though, it's not enough to find out what the best boat is. We want the viewers to find out what's the best boat for them. For more information, log on to floridasportsman.com, check out our boating page, and help find out what the best boat is for you. Be sure to join us next week when we cover 20 to 28 foot dual console boats on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Each month, turn to Florida Sportsman for the best in boating and fishing coverage.